this wagon thing has been absolutely kicking me in the butt. This is my logic basically doubled. I mean, it's okay. I've got I've got space to fit it. It's just while I'm still working on it, it's really a pain. But what I want to do right now, I'll give you a tour, but I want to set this up because you might notice that I've got a really long wagon now, and the the crane and shape is all changed and hooks and stuff. Most most of it's working now. First thing we'll look at is the display that I was working on for this. Here it is. That's the display. So the idea is that this is a one by two display. On the left we have up and down arrows with a number in the middle, which is the winch length for each of the hooks, big hook, small hook. We've got magnets down at the bottom and they toggle from this gray state to this red state. So gray is off, red is on. The small magnet represents the small hook and the big magnet represents the big hook. So you can lower and raise them, turn the magnets off and on, and that's handled on this side. Then on the right, we've got brakes, a percentage of how much the brakes are applied, and then speed with the speed in kilometers below, which I might actually need to... How stupid are people? Do I need to put a KMH in there and shuffle it across? But anyway, we've got arrow buttons so that you can arrow up and down. This is kind of what it ended up looking like. I changed a lot of the colors and I made it look, it's more, it's TCP colors. It's more in the TCP style. So you push the buttons and the numbers change and the arrows light up. These two numbers here are reading off the wrong value. So that's why they say 64 and 32, but at least they say something because it was a real pain to get this working. So here it is on the wrecker on the crane. I got rid of the handle that was on here because I was going to put remote control on this anyway. So I thought I'll just get rid of the handle. It wasn't working out for placement of instruments and things around here. So it was just easier to hide it over here, have the unlock system and then a channel. So you can say, oh, it's going really fast. <laughs> I haven't tested this properly. Uh, I should probably flip this as well so that the arrows are below so that you don't see the tooltips when you're trying to see what channel you're on. Because, you know, we can't see what channel we're on right now. But you'd be able to set a channel, so this is on channel 5, and that way you can have... I mean, you could have two remotes, actually. That would make a lot of sense. But you could have one crane on this side and then another crane on the other side of the wagon and be able to control basically four hooks remotely. At the moment, you can't control the up and down or the magnets of the cranes from the, the from the uh, from the remote control. But I'm going to hook them up on the arrow keys. Left and right will do probably the big hook, and up and down will do the small hook. And then buttons one and two will activate the magnets. So you'll be able to drive it from here, or you'll be able to hop off, unlock the crane. I also need to lock it out from receiving controls until it's unlocked. So yeah, right now all I can do is up and down and turn it from from the remote control. Got a little ladder there now so that you can actually hop up when it's turned. And then with these arrows, I can raise and lower these hooks. And I had so many issues getting this number of how how long that winch is because when a pulley is in use these winches they don't output a length anymore they don't know what that is they've never heard of winch length if we come and look at them here with a tooltip you can see the length is 0.28 even though it's you know, the, the ropes have been extended out. It's probably more like two meters or three meters or something. In fact, I can show you how many meters it is. It's five meters. So none of these winches know how long the ropes are. And that was why I was having issues with these because I was checking the winch length and what position I was in to retract them, but they're just not outputting anything. What I actually need to do is check the pulley length. So if we look at the pulley, 
you can see it's got a length that's updating because the ropes are going in and out based on their weight. So instead of one antenna receiving a signal to turn the maggles on, I now have another antenna sending out a signal back to the crane so that the crane knows how long that rope is. It's an extremely stupid situation to be in. I think this is just another one of those moments where these developers have just bungled something up so badly because they don't even play their own game. They have no idea what's going on. Um, so these microcontrollers on here though, um, they're just there because I'm still working on it and they will be invisible. So the hitbox will be there, but they'll be visually invisible. There's also, there's a pump in this one and there's an invisible pump on this side. So there are still some invisible things going on around here. So below the crane controls, I've got the master and reverse controls. So you can drive this crane from here. If I get it turned on, I'll reset it so that it's obviously a little bit nicer to drive if it's all reset and locked in with the grippers. Yeah, the engine started. I've put the light switches in here. So I think headlights and exterior lights is that one. I need to request master and then those should turn on. And I can turn on, I've got warning lights as well. I just connected those. So these are just some orange flashing lights on every corner down low. And then there's two on the back at the top and you can just see them there on the front of the boom they're all just flashing lights oh yeah so speed right now i've limited it to three kilometers rather than 10 because three is about it's a little bit slower than your walking speed if you fell off and it started rolling away you can quite easily catch it i was considering just connecting the player sensor and then saying if there's no player, just stop or apply brakes or something. I'm not sure on that one because there might be a situation where you're like, okay, I just need to move it down the tracks, but I don't want to sit on it. I mean, it's going pretty fast though, isn't it? For a crane, for a crane on its own, it's gotten pretty quick. I might have to connect that player sensor. So if there's no one on it anywhere, it just applies the brakes and drops the throttle. Then I've put the decouple over here because there might be a situation where you just want to decouple the wagon and the crane from here, or you want to disconnect something behind you. I'm not sure, but it's there if you want it and it balances out those two displays on the front. Now I'm just going to set up a little, little test. I was playing around with recovering a train earlier today to make sure that my maggles worked and it does work. But the problem is, there is hidden mass, apparently. I'm still not sure if I believe this or not, but there's hidden mass on train wheels, and that is why trains are stupidly heavy. This is my loco, except I've put a rocket booster on it that minuses 10,000 mass off it. So in, say, a simulated train crash, this train has derailed and fallen over sideways. And I was having a look at like what kind of cranes exist, and I stumbled across Thomas the Tank Engine. And in the episode where James falls in a ditch, uh, I wasn't really paying that much attention to it, but I saw a crane like this, where it had one crane at one end and another crane at the other end. And so I'm just gonna try that right now and try and lift my train. This train is very light because it has 10,000 mass removed from it, which I think each wheel, if you think about each one of these wheels, supposedly there's a hidden mass of 1000 per wheel. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wheels. Each one is supposed to weigh 200 mass, but has a thousand mass extra. So if I negative, if I minus 9,000 mass from this, then I should have my true mass, a true weight of the locomotive. Um, decouple is actually really helpful for this. I didn't really think about this, but it, it is like I can now see that I'm here. I have a wagon in front of me and I'm not connected to that one over there just yet. But there we can see we've got two extra cars on the front. Turn my speed down and I probably need to come back a little bit. So I can engage reverse with the switch. It's probably easier to just jam on the brakes when I think I'm in the right place. 
jam on those brakes, turn down the speed, reverse so brakes are engaged and then I can, this one is on zero, I might go and turn the other crane on and see if I can get it land on one. I unlock this and go, oh, it only goes one way, cool. Seven, nine, two, I'm looking for one, two will do. So this crane is two and the other one is zero. I'll deploy the outriggers because that will turn on the brakes. Put all these like hazard stripes on here. I think they look really cool. Just to try and add some detail. I still need stuff up on the side of it, but I think it looks really nice. Having this very coherent stripe that runs across multiple wagons makes it look like a proper set. Um, I've put a fuel and electrical anchor on here and I've put some ropes on the side. I still want to have some kind of proper rope locker thing, but for now it's a good enough solution. Okay, so channel two. I guess the other problem with this kind of crane is it's not very long. Unlock. Yeah, I need to try and stop it from doing that big janky jump. So uh, I think I should try and connect both winches. Right now I've only got one input that I can push at a time so I can only lower and magnetize. Like I can't push a magnet right now. I can only take that one input. <laughs> I managed to do it with only one of these before so it's way lighter now. Uh, cool. <laughs> cool. Which one is this? Channel 2? Yeah, see, so like one of them can lift it. Oof. That's just because of removing so much mass, and I think I'm going to do that with all my locomotives in the future. If they really have put a hidden amount of mass that's a thousand per wheel. That's why trains are so heavy and it's just unreasonable. This is a very old style of crane, I guess. Uh oh, it'd be good to build a new style as well with an extending boom. Just like use all the same interfaces and stuff, bang it out really quickly. So I think if I lift it on channel on crane two, just get the front moved across. Yes. See, this is this is actually fun. I think the rear has snapped on as well. Minor damage. That's such a good proof of concept though, and it's really satisfying to do that. I think maybe I've got. I think it's 10,000 mass off my locomotive. 10,000 might be too much. But if I just find whatever the minimum amount is to be able to lift it with one maggle, then I think that's just the way to build trains in the future, like going forwards. Make them so that they're liftable. I think now if I reset, it's not gonna come down because my up and down's not connected. It's gonna reset to there. And then this, disconnect the magnets. What I'll need to do is with the reset, have it disconnect all the magnets, winch everything up. And because of the, the height of the hooks, I can't lower the crane's boom right down to negative. I think it's negative 0.1. It actually sits much better at zero. It does reset, it does hold at zero. So if I unlock it, Oh, is it going down? It'll snap when it hits the grippers. Like that. <laughs> and yeah, the reset should probably have a way to retract all of these at once. Well, I don't know. Is it more interactive to force you to come around and close everything up manually? It's like how automatic should it be? Should it be fully automatic? So this is the master. I can lock the master. And turn the brakes off. I think the brakes might actually be on with one of the switches here. 
Yeah. Now we can go. Bye bye, locomotive. I need to put a little padded seat somewhere, maybe back there, so I can sit and go into third person on this. I thought these hooks were going to be much closer, so I might actually cut out a big section in the middle because I want to be able to lift things, right? So I only need probably one of these track section so if I cut out three of them that'll make it much narrower much shorter and bring these cranes in way closer they look so cool I haven't I haven't looked at it fully complete like this it just needs a little bit of detail work on the cab exterior and then maybe some support beams or something on that roof section that's hanging out okay let's turn on the work lights warning lights I don't know if those ones over there are going to turn on. I tried to connect to TCP, but I was getting a bit frustrated. Oh, it is connected. That's so cool. It's going really slow, like the game's lagging, because those lights should be flashing a lot quicker. I'm pretty confident that this is basically done, so I'll be working on something new pretty soon. Let me know what you want to see next, because I'm going to do a boxcar some kind of coal transport or ore transport wagon or gondola i think it's called tanker there was some other things so let me know which one you want to see next and i'll try and prioritize that also let me know what colors i should use i'm gonna keep using tcp's colors for the displays like these displays if i do custom stuff then i'll still try and keep tcp's colors so that all the tcp interfaces kind of match together I have enabled sort of a permanent dark mode though, so I don't know if I'll put in a light mode. I'm so happy with this. This has turned out so well. I haven't really like tested it or looked at it zoomed out like this in a full working train. So this is the first time I'm seeing it and I'm so happy how it looks. Anyway, I've got to go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.